Hello everybody, in my line of work, not only do I get to drive some very cool cars, I also get to meet some very cool people. And today, I'm doing a little bit of both, and this is gonna be another entry in my Cool Cars for Young People series, because this is a cool car owned by a young person. It belongs to a chap called Adam, who was at one point in time, the youngest registered pilot in Britain. He is now only 20 years old, and he was, for a while, and still is to some extent, using an aircraft to commute to work. He does, of course, drive two, and this is only his second car. It replaces an old 2008 Mini. And while you might think that anybody who's a pilot and is very young would have lots and lots and lots of money, that's not always the case, and that's not the case with him. So he wanted something that was really cool, a little bit different, quite sporty, affordable, and could be had on a reasonable budget, not just purchasing, but in terms of running costs too. His dream is a Giulia Quadrifoglio. It seemed like Alfa Romeo were undergoing a real renaissance. However, their fortunes have changed of late. You see, this car is built on what they call the Giorgio platform, the first longitudinally mounted rear wheel drive platform Alfa had since the 75 was discontinued in 1992. And sadly, it isn't going to be around for much longer because Alfa Romeo have decided they have no interest in building any more cars like this. Which is a shame, because they're rather good at it. The Giulio lineup I've never really quite properly understood. I think everybody knows the Quadrifoglio and that of course is the one that everybody wants. However, the fact is it was never going to be the big seller. You can get a diesel in this country, but you can also get a few petrol versions too. There is a base 2 litre, 200 horsepower turbo, but there's also this, which makes about 280 horsepower, costs a little bit more and has different front and rear bumpers. It also has these very nice leather seats and it's the last step before the Quadrifoglio. In most other manufacturers' lineups, there'll probably be at least one or two more cars, you know, something with 350 horsepower, then maybe 400 before you got onto the full fat 500, but not for Alfa Romeo. So if you do want a sporty Alfa, but you don't want it to be a Quadrifoglio, this is the car you're gonna be buying. And happily, it's actually very good. I think it's a stunning looking thing, particularly in this Misano blue paint. And if anything, there really isn't a huge amount to differentiate it from a Quadrifoglio unless you know your Alphas. And I don't. The interior of recent Alphas has unfortunately been a little bit disappointing and the Giulia really doesn't buck that trend. Yes, it's certainly better than the Giulietta, but it still feels just a little bit cheap and nasty compared to, say, an equivalent Mercedes, BMW or Audi at the same price. There's just a few too many scratchy plastic surfaces, the buttons just look a little bit older than they really should, and this info screen here just isn't up to scratch. Only in 2020 did these get given Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so that's really a shame. I also have had some pretty unfortunate recent experience with an Alfa Romeo Giulia because I had one as a courtesy car when my Ferrari was in for service and after three weeks of pretty much no trouble whatsoever, it tried to kill me when the brakes failed and they wouldn't stop the car. The brakes incidentally are one of the weak points of this anyway because they're a brake by wire system and that never really worked all that well. The pedal never really feels quite like it should. The resistance doesn't match the braking force, and so you find even simple things like coming to a stop at a junction much more difficult and fraught with danger than they really should be. Other manufacturers seem to have done it quite a bit better than Alpha, and these brakes when you're on the move are, are fine, but they're just not particularly feelsome. There are small details though that I really do like. These great big aluminium paddles, really nice in the hand, and they're connected to the familiar 8-speed ZF gearbox. In other markets you could have this car in all-wheel drive, but here in the UK it was rear-wheel drive only. In terms of practicality, the Julie is actually a fairly decent size. It's kind of roughly three series equivalent. There is space in the back for people to sit quite comfortably, and the boot's pretty generous too. When these were new, you'd be looking at about £40,000 for one, and now you could get one for about half that. So, is it really worth your money? Well, that can be answered very simply, because it all depends on whether you're interested in what happens when you change this little switch from here, from A to D, slide the car over into manual mode, and put your foot down.
it may not have the bluster and glamour and drama of the full fat quadrifoglio. The engine here is decent, if not brilliant. It responds from fairly low down. Turbo lag is there. It's neither good nor bad. However, it's the way this car feels on a country road that really separates the Alpha from much of the competition. The steering is actually surprisingly decent. It doesn't exactly wriggle in the hand, but it's got a good weighting. There is a little bit of texture to it, and it's pretty quick as well. It was amazing that Alfa Romeo used the same kind of steering feel in this as they do in the Quadrifoglio gearbox is brilliant as well exactly the same as the top end model it responds so crisply you would believe it was a dual clutcher the ride is also brilliant too the car's really quite supple and that means in the real world it can carry quite a bit of pace now you do need to exercise caution because the front end isn't the most communicative you can wind up pushing into a bend a little bit more than you maybe thought you were however this car is an absolute joy. This road I've driven quite a bit this week and it's a really good test of a car's dynamics because it's not a very good road, but this is handling it really nicely. This gives you that real proper exciting sports car feeling, which you're just not gonna find in many other things for this kind of price. Pulling away it does let itself down because it's quite slow to respond. You need to be aware of that if you are in traffic. These seats do an excellent job. They're really nice high quality leather and that's perhaps the greatest frustration about this car. It's just so inconsistent. There are pieces of it that are genuinely truly brilliant and then other bits which are just absolutely woeful. I feel like Alpha needed just a bit more time and a bit more money thrown at the car and then they would have had something absolutely world class. As it is, I feel like this is like listening to, you know, a demo recording of a brilliant track by your favourite artist. It's quite familiar, but it's also not the finished product that you know and love. However, if you are a young person looking for something quite different and you don't want to buy into a hot hatchback, this is really a very good car. It doesn't even have the fizz or the drama of something like a Fiesta ST, but it makes up for it with a little bit of maturity. The way it goes down a road really is quite lovely, and that gearbox, really addictive. The feel from these paddles is proper. This is a great car to show people why it is that us old fuddy-duddies loved Italian engineering so much. All that little kick you get in dynamic mode when you change up at four and a bit thousand RPM, or more if you so desire, just that little snap traction control there intervening just a little bit because the road is quite dusty in parts but it's not too invasive and the whole thing just flows so so very well the roads in Italy are not very good they're quite lumpy quite bumpy very uneven lots of crests potholes and things which is great because that's very much how our roads are too so you'll find the best of Italian cars work really well here As a motorway cruiser, I think you could probably do an awful lot better for the money. And in terms of car park appeal, I think a lot of young people wouldn't really see the benefit of this. But then I'm not a young person anymore. The hell do I know? Technology is more out of date than it should be. And reliability, unfortunately, isn't stellar. The old Alfa Romeo tropes still alive and well. But equally, the old Alfa Romeo tropes of them being fun to drive are also present and correct. So if you're willing to take a chance and you're willing to be a little bit understanding with your car, this is a very good thing to buy. It is actually a much nicer car to pilot than, say, the Jaguar XE, which for my money is just a little bit too stiffly sprung. Very fun indeed, and you drive that like a hot hatch. This you don't. You drive this one like a proper car. Over the last 3,000 miles, Adams achieved about the same fuel economy you'd expect from most sort of modern hot hatches. 32.4 is the claimed average in the trip computer. If you're a fan of gadgets and things, do look elsewhere. But if you're a young person on the hunt for something that's kind of sensible, but also got a bit of fun, a bit of spark, is a little bit different. The Veloce model in particular, I think, is probably the one to go for. I've driven the diesel and it's, it's okay. And if you want better fuel economy, of course, go for it. But it's just not the one I think most young petrol heads would want. 280 horsepower is also quite a bit more than the 200 you'd get in the regular car, so it should feel a fair bit brisker. Even better, to pick up a Veloce now only costs you a couple of thousand pounds more than the regular car, where it was closer to about 7,000 when they were new. So if you are in the market for a Julia, 
this is probably the one to buy unless you want the full fat thing. And that unfortunately is gonna be a little bit expensive. Insurance for Adam on one of those was gonna be 7,000 pounds a year. Anyway, thanks to you all for watching. Big thank you to Adam for bringing his car out today at particularly late notice. So do excuse it being a little bit dirty. I gave him sort of 60 minute warning and he came out, no arguments. Please like, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.